I hope you're having a great day. Today, I want to talk about self-worth. I get beautiful messages from a lot of you every single day. My message box is filled with beautiful words, beautiful blessings, beautiful messages, a lot of requests for help on certain subjects of cancer and nutrition. A lot of you also ask that, Luke, you know, you, you, you treat patients with cancer, you treat patients with diabetes, all of that stuff, but you, you talk mainly, while you talk about health, sometimes you mainly talk about the mind, you talk about the heart, you talk about emotional health. Why? And I tell them this. You know, when I started off in my career, yes, it would always be talking about deep cellular nutrition, talking about anatomy, talking about how the human body works, how cancers work, what we do, remissions, all of that stuff. But over the last five to six years, there's one thing I've learned. <clears throat> Our physical health is dependent on everything that's going on in year and year. When we are emotionally low, when we feel we're not worth it, when we feel horrible about ourselves, when we don't know how to handle the stress in our life, it changes the way we eat. It changes the way we sleep. It changes the way we think. <clears throat> it changes the way we move. When we're emotionally low, we have sedentary lifestyles. We're sleep deprived. We're constantly harboring resentment, guilt, anger, chronic envy, all of these negative emotions that connect to sickness. We choose the wrong foods. When we're emotionally low, we don't crave apples and pumpkin seeds and soups and salads. It's always the sugar and the carbs and everything else. So while we can try to fix people with diets and medicine and everything else, what if we started to fix what was going on in our own hearts and minds? And now because we feel better about ourselves, we start to appreciate ourselves. We start to value the gift of life, which is this amazing body that we have. And automatically, we don't have to be inspired and motivated to eat better. We eat better because we honor the human body. We honor our health. We respect it. We move our bodies more without inspiration and motivation because it is the right thing to do. We need it for great health. We start to sleep better because we realize that sleep is medicine. We start to look and use techniques that can help us emotionally with matters of the heart and the mind. <clears throat> Today, I'm talking about something that derails us from happiness. Your worth your self-worth. How, how do you know how much you're worth? I'm not talking about in terms of money. How do you know the worth that you have within you? Maybe you knew your worth some time ago, but it got stolen away when you lost that relationship or where someone put you down and ridiculed you, where society made you feel bad, where a sickness came and it derailed you and shook your faith. But along with all of that, you lost, you lost your self-worth. You cannot feel good if you don't have self-worth. We all have self-worth. We're all born with worth. All of us. We're worthy of everything that nature has to offer. But we build these own self-limiting thoughts that I'm not worthy of this. I made a mistake. I'm guilty. I'm not worthy of this. I'm not worthy of someone else's love. I'm not worthy of good health because X, Y, Z. I'm not worthy of a great job or abundance because X, Y, Z has happened. These are all beliefs that you've put in your mind. And what we're going to understand today are the things that we should never measure ourselves against to define our self-worth. Because if you've allowed your self-worth to be defined by society and other people, your children, your partners, or you are defining the self-worth of your children as a parent, that's where all the trouble starts. A lot of people struggling in depression today they lack the self-worth to come out of it. While you need medicine, counseling, I'm not taking away from your pain, but self-worth can help us move out of difficult situations in life. When we hit rock bottom, or we're going through grief because we've lost someone we love, or we've lost a job, or something bad happened in your workplace, someone hurt you, someone betrayed you, whatever it is, it is your self-worth that allows you to get through this. You can get through difficulties by drinking yourself senseless, smoking up a couple of joints, drugs, socializing, mindless shopping, you know, mindless sex, all of that. You can, you can get through for a while, it's temporary. Finally, what is gonna keep you going through is your self-worth. 
What is the self-worth that I'm talking about? Self-worth is nothing but the way you value yourself. The way you value yourself is your self-worth. Your self-worth is entirely up to you, not anyone else. What you believe you deserve, what you believe you are worthy of. Now, where does this go wrong? When we attach our self-worth by comparing ourselves with other people. When we attach or measure our self-worth against things that I'm gonna talk about right now. So what I talk about right now are things that you should never measure your self-worth to. So starting off, I made a whole list of it. Number one, what you like. What you like. You can like old school music even though everyone's trying to act cool and you know listen to the latest music. That doesn't define your self-worth. Your self-worth is, I love old school music. I love the singer even though everyone doesn't like him. I like the singer, he may not be cool and famous but he or she's touched my heart. You don't allow your self-worth to be defined by what other people like currently, what the trend is, what the vibe is, no. What the vibe and the trend is is great, but you can still love what you like. You don't change your likes because it's not fitting into what society or the trends are dictating right now. The same thing with art. You may love certain art that other people say that's horrible, but you like it. That's your self-worth. That's the way it makes you feel good. You value it because of your worth. You don't do it like you know the whole FOMO culture and stuff like that. Everyone's, most people are FOMO, FOMO because they don't want to be left out, but they're not living their inner selves. Exactly that, their self-worth is controlled by society. So the number one thing that you never measure yourself is what you like. If you truly like something, even if the world hates it, but you like it because it serves you, it makes you feel good, you go on liking it. That's how you know your self-worth is good. That let people like what they want, but I can like what I want. Self-worth. That's how a lot of teenagers lose their self-worth in their college years because everyone's trying to conform to what the latest trend is. And that's okay as a teenager, we all do it. But as we mature, if we still continue with that, that's how we slip into depression. That's how we slip into feeling horrible no matter how much you have, you still feel empty because your self-worth is at rock bottom. The second is, you never measure your self-worth with money. How much you have or how little you have. There are billionaires, super rich people who still have low self-worth. And there are people who don't have too much of money, but their self-worth is high. They value themselves. I may not have money, but I have integrity, but I have passion, but I have love. All of that self-worth again. If your self-worth has to be controlled by your bank balance, it's not self-worth. You've outsourced it to a material thing that can also always constantly change. So while money can make us feel good, powerful, buy all, it is not your self-worth. So does that mean that billionaires and people who have a lot of money are worthy, more worthy than you? You put yourself down. They haven't put you down. You've put yourself down. When you put yourself in a class, oh, I'm only middle class. I'm only this. All these rich people are. The only person getting damaged is you. Your self-worth is going lower and lower because you've put yourself into a box. No one has. No one has. Most people put themselves in their own boxes because of their own self-worth. You can have a little, but you value yourself so much and it comes out in your confidence and you don't care what people say. Your money doesn't define who you are. And you'll have a lot of rich people using money to show their power and all of that stuff with the wrong intention. They are people of low self-worth because they need to show power. You never have to show power if your self-worth is high because you already value yourself. Irrespective if people value you or don't, you value yourself. <clears throat> So you don't have to go out trying to get validation. You don't have to go out trying to prove yourself. So that's another thing. Never measure your self-worth with money. Your relationship status. Irrespective of your relationship, whether you have a same-sex partner, whether you've gone through a divorce, whether you went through a breakup, whether you're a single mom, a single dad, whether you're a child without a parent, it doesn't change how you value yourself. Because if you allow that, you support a whole community that then forms extremes of single parents, single, same partner, sex, all of that stuff. You support that. But irrespective of your relationship status, it doesn't change how you value yourself, how you treat yourself. So the responsibility comes to you. 
your self-worth. People of low self-worth will fight for the status to be right. How does the status matter? The status doesn't matter. It's how you feel at the end of the day, how you value yourself. So irrespective of your relationship status, your self-worth has nothing to do with that. It is how you value yourself, whether you're single, same sex, doesn't matter. It's how you feel and how you value. You don't wait for society to define your status and how you should be. That if you're single, this is how you should be. If you're married, this is how you should be. If you're gay, lesbian, whatever, this is how you should be. You do it either ways because you feel good about yourself and you value yourself. You never compare or, or benchmark yourself with on the number of friends you have. Oh, I have so many friends, I feel good about myself. Tomorrow you lose five friends and you're at your counselor's office. No, a lot of people have a lot of friends, but yet they're yet lonely. Some people have a few friends that you can count on your fingers and their relationships thrive. The number of friends do not matter. The quality of those people in your life matter. So your self-worth is not dependent on how many friends you have. It is how you feel with two friends or 10 friends. If you still feel worthless with a crowd of people around you that you call your friends, you have a problem with your self-worth. You've attached it to how many people. So all the time I need to be with people to feel better. You don't always have to be with people to feel better. Sometimes it's nice. You can vent out, have fun. I'm not talking about that. But if because you feel low, you need people because your self-worth is attached to that, they're never gonna make you happy, ever. And it's not their job to. So never, friends again, very number of friends don't matter. Your self-worth isn't dependent on how many holidays you take. There are people taking holidays every two to three months and they're yet depressed, unhappy, sad, and they don't thrive in their relationships at work, partners or anything else. It is the quality of those holidays. Today everyone is, oh, I travel three times a year, four times a year, doesn't matter. Is that travel making you happy? Are those holidays making memories? Are you chasing happiness or are you chasing meaning in life? Your self-worth doesn't depend on how many holidays you take. It depends on how you feel, how you value yourself with those holidays, post those holidays, without a holiday. It shouldn't change. Your self-worth shouldn't drop because I can't take as many holidays as my friends. It stays the same because you value yourself. An extra holiday doesn't mean your self-worth goes up or down. This is mainly for kids and teenagers. Your grades do not define your self-worth. You could be a low, you could have low grades, high grades. It doesn't change your self-worth. It may give you certain you know, uh, possibilities more than someone who has a lower grade or vice versa or whatever, that's it. But if you have low grades or you have high grades, it doesn't change your self-worth. So for all the kids out there who commit suicide or get depressed and stuff because they got 95% instead of 96%, okay, you've attached your self-worth to that. That may not just be entirely your problem, it may be the problem of your parents as well because they've taught you that your self-worth in the world is dependent on your grades. And it isn't. It isn't. Absolutely not. Your grades are there to get you into a particular class or a college course or vice versa. It ends there. It doesn't define who you are. Does that mean everyone who have low grades are gonna be useless and people not worthy of success? Absolutely not. You're looking at one, low grades right through my career. I'm just giving you an example. It doesn't matter. Your grades don't define your self-worth and I hope every parent out there realizes this. And if your children have low grades, it doesn't define your self-worth as parents and society. Too many parents out there, they have low self-worth, so they're comparing their kids with other kids. Oh, you see, his son, he got, what are you doing? His grades are so high, what are you, you're so useless and stuff like that. It's your insecurities, don't drive them on your children. Don't drive your low self-worth on your children. You fix your low self-worth if you're gonna be a good parent. But don't mess up your child's life by using grades as a way for them to measure their self-worth. Achievements in sports. If you didn't win the race, it doesn't mean you're not worthy of life and happiness. You lost the race, try harder, big deal. It's gone to the extent that schools have to remove competition today because children get emotionally weak and need psychologists and psychiatrists because they lost. That's the sad part of today's world. Emotionally, and by doing all of this, it's not like kids or adults have gotten emotionally stronger. Everyone's gotten emotionally weaker. What's wrong with losing? Everything if you've attached your self-worth to losing. 
There's nothing wrong with losing. There can only be one winner. There can only be one winner, whether you like it or you don't. Play the game or don't play the game. Homeschool your kids. If you want to protect them from losing or teach them that it's okay to lose, it just doesn't define who you are. It just doesn't define who you are. People in the Olympics, athletes, they don't win all the time, they lose. And the losers never come back. But the winners, they come back again because they know that the loss didn't define their self-worth. It's how you value yourself even when you lose. You can feel bad, of course, no one likes to lose. Feel bad, but you don't attach how you feel, how you live, your image, your personality based on that one loss. The next thing, never, never, a benchmark your self-worth according to what people think. So if your self-worth and how you value yourself is dependent on all the compliments you get, the criticism and all of that stuff, you're someone else's puppet. Today they say something good, oh, I feel so worthy. Tomorrow one person says something bad and I'm depressed. I feel so bad. Because your self-worth doesn't change irrespective of what people say, do, their opinions and what they don't say. You still value yourself. Of course, we all like compliments and we'll feel better. But if they don't come, it doesn't mean we change our value. So never benchmark your self-worth against what people say and stuff. Your appearance and your body. Okay, you don't like how you look, change it. You want to lose weight, you want to build muscle, do it. But do not attach your self-worth to that. The reason why most people fail in losing weight, building great bodies is not the lack of nutrition and exercise. It's the way they feel about themselves. They've attached their self-worth with how they look. So if you are dependent on valuing yourself based on your physical looks, the color of your skin, your hair, all of that, you are going to have many happy moments while it all looks good and miserable moments when it changes and when people don't agree that they think you look good. So of course we're gonna feel bad. Hey, someone comes up and hey, look, you look horrible and you've been working out and you look horrible. I'm gonna feel bad, but it doesn't change how I feel about myself. I still know I'm Luke. I know what I'm doing. I know what I feel. I'll feel bad, but I will not allow that statement to define me and go into a depression and allow them to rob my head space and my mind space and now chase some crazy diet just to prove a point. It doesn't matter. Maybe I'll look like, oh yeah, I have been slacking on my workouts. I can put on a little bit of muscle and I'll get to it but I will not let someone define my value and neither should you. Your age, never let your age define your self-worth. Whether you're old, whether you're young, you're a teenager, you're aging, your days, your youth is over. Welcome a new phase of your life. There are people in their 40s trying to be, their, be 30. There are people in their 50s trying to be 40s. In urban cities across Mumbai, Delhi, Calcutta, all of that, we have young 45 and 50 years people trying to live their youth. Oh, I'm doing MDMA, I'm cool, I'm doing LSD, I'm cool. I, I don't care if you do it or not, but don't make it linked to your self-worth that to feel better, I'm trying to be like the youngsters, let's do some crystal tonight and stuff like that. Low self-worth. You gotta do it, do it quietly, enjoy yourself. You don't have to make a big deal about it. You don't have to have special parties to try to show your kids that hey, we're cool as parents as well. Low self-worth. So age is never a barrier unless you make it. So if your self-worth changes against your age, imagine how miserable your life's gonna be. Oh, oh, when I'm 40, I'm gonna feel miserable. When I'm 50, I'm gonna be old. When I'm 60, you should be thriving and evolving at that point, irrespective. I wanna color my hair, I'm in my 50s. So what if you're 50s? What's the big deal with a little bit of white hair? How long are you gonna cover that up? People can still see you're old in so many other ways. My point is be comfortable with yourself. You can color your hair, but not because it defines your self-worth, because you want to. Social media following. If you judge your self-worth according to the followers you have, the likes you have, you are miserable right now. It's nice to know if your content was good. It's nice to know if people like you, but there are people constantly checking their phone who like, oh, this person didn't like. And then you go back and remove a like of their post. This happens, this happens because we are also, we are people on our program who are influencers and people and they're depressed. Their happy life is on Instagram. Their sad life is with us. Your social media following does not define your self-worth. You can have 10 million people and you can still be a patient of depression. You can have 500 people and you can be the happiest person in the world. Because what people rate you and say to you on social media does not define your self-worth. 
You value yourself the way you do. Social media doesn't put that value on you. If you are allowing social media to put that value on you, you should not be on social media because you cannot handle it. You cannot handle it. So exit, become strong and come back again. And the last part is your job. Your job should never determine your self-worth. I know nurses, male and women nurses, whose job is to clean the patients every day who are bedridden. Does that define their self-worth? Absolutely not. It's a job. The self-worth of the woman or the man doing your garden or your housework, that doesn't define their self-worth. Your job doesn't define your self-worth, not as your position. Your job is something that you're doing for an X, Y, Z reason. But if it defines, when I get this job, I'll be happy. When I get the job, I'll feel powerful. No, you be happy and you feel powerful no matter what. If you're doing a job that you don't love, that's your problem. Change it. Change it. Change the job that you don't like, but don't ever let a job define your self-worth. These are the things that you should never use self-worth in comparison to. Your self-worth, I will repeat, is completely dependent on how you value yourself. You can wear diamond rings and expensive watches and still feel horrible about yourself because your self-worth is that. You can go with slippers and a t-shirt and short pants to a party and you can feel awesome because you value yourself. You don't care about what, well, you don't need a diamond ring or fancy shoes to define who you are. So your exercise is very simple. The reason I'm talking about this today is because people are ruining their lives by not knowing their worth. Every morning you wake up, you remind yourself of the worth that you have, the value that you have, so no one else can ever steal it away from you and no one can define you. Before you go to bed at night, you reflect on the worth that you have. When you buy a diamond or gold, you want to know the value of it. Why? Why do you want to know the value of the things you buy? When are you going to know the value that you have? But you can't see that value because you're stuck in guilt, you're stuck in victimhood, you're stuck in the past mistakes, you start, you're stuck in all of these problems. When that lifts, you see the worth that you have. Every human being on this planet has worth. A prisoner in prison, they've done wrong things, but there'll be worth that they have. A criminal, there will be worth in them, but we've, oh, it's criminal, we can't see anything else in them. There's always worth and goodness in every human being. It's up to us to find it for ourselves first, because it is the way you value yourself. It is what you believe you are worthy of. Your self-worth is entirely up to you. Period. So when you come and say, hey, I don't feel good, this person makes me feel bad. Where's your self-worth? How can someone make you feel bad? They can hurt you for a bit, but if you value yourself, it can't be permanent. Have a great day, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, breathe deep, and remember, you care is all about you.